Moving right along, let's get back into this idea of the ownership chain. So we closed out that last video with an example that showed a chain where the same owner owned all the objects. Okay? And that's normal. That's the way it is 98, 99% of the time. However, when you do have different owners in that chain, SQL Server will check that permission at every change in ownership. So this is what you want right here. You really want to know this piece right here. At each change in ownership, SQL Server checks the permissions. Okay? It's called ownership chain. That's hard, man. I hope you don't have to deal with this. I'm going to teach it to you, but it's, it's a lot of work for a DBA. Okay. Okay, so an ownership chaining demo that I might have, uh, for example, here uh, would be something like um, I've got a table uh, down here. We're going to have DBO dot, uh, what it, was it in the last one, merchant. Okay, so that's my base object, the base table. Uh, and that is owned by the DBO. So the owner uh, would be owned by dbo user so you remember that the dbo user gets their own schema uh, his own schema her own schema whichever it is okay so then what we're going to have is we're going to have uh, finance dot uh, merchant accounts okay and this is owned uh, i should have just doesn't have like a tab a function by Chad, uh, no, 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 Terry, the user account, okay? Uh, and then on top of that, let's say that this is um, a view, right? So this is a table here, and this is a view, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a stored procedure uh, in uh, reports dot um, merch sales and this is going to be owned by Chrissy okay and in to continue our example here uh, this is a stored procedure okay but there's a dependency chain there's an ownership chain going on here so finance.merchant account the view is built on top of dbo.merchant Reports.merch sales is built on top of the view. It's not built on top of DBO.merchant. So that's important to know. Reports.merch sales does not go back to DBO.merchant. It goes through the view finance.merchant account. Okay? And this is an ownership chain. We have different owners in our ownership chain. Okay? So when will SQL Server check permissions? at each change in ownership. So you're going to have it check permissions here and here when, because there's a change in ownership. Every time it comes through there, okay, every time in this chain that it sees a different owner, it's going to check permissions. Okay. So here's an example, another one. The DBO creates a view admin.getMerchants that references DBO.getMerchants. Okay. The DBO grants Chrissy select on the view. Okay. So when Chrissy selects from the view, is ownership chaining in effect? The answer is no, and maybe it's not 100% clear. Just as I'm looking at it, I kind of uh, recognize here. The DBO owns the admin. Okay, So the DBO owns the schema admin. So in this case, we have, let's use uh, this, we have um, admin.getMerchants is built on top of dbo.merchant. And so we have that. Okay. But the DBO owns both schemas. So our entry point is here, right? That's the entry point. And if you remember our big green check mark, we granted Chrissy the ability to select from admin.getMerchants. So since this is the entry point, 
this is the only one that gets checked. That's the only permission that gets checked. Okay? Where a lot of people get confused is it's not the schema name that causes SQL Server to check the permission again. It's the fact that the schemas are owned by different users. Okay, I hope that made, made sense right there. So we can have two different user accounts right here, two, uh, this one and this one, I'm, I'm sorry, two different schemas, but they're owned by the same user. So it's not ownership chaining. Okay. All right. Now, here we go. This is going to get a little difficult. I've got a couple of questions for you. Okay. Forget everything about Chrissy, Chad, all, all that stuff. You know, just empty your brain right now. Okay. Chrissy owns the admin schema. She has the create view privilege. She creates a view, admin.getmerchants, that she owns, based on dbo.merchant. Okay. Can Chrissy create the view even though she does not have select privilege on dbo.merchant? You notice that I didn't say that public had the permission. It doesn't. I didn't say her user account had any permissions on dbo.merchant. It doesn't. So she actually could not run the statement, select all from dbo.merchant. But will she be able to create a view, admin.getmerchants, based on a table she can't read? Well, it may surprise you, uh, but the answer is yes. I thought I had it listed on the next page here. Uh, but the answer is a most definite yes. It's going to have deferred security. Since she has the create view permission, SQL Server is going to allow her to create the view. But when she runs the view, what's going to happen? Let's take a look at number two. Now, she can't select, but she was able to create the view. Can she select from her own view and thereby bypassing SQL Server security? What do you think? Well, that, that's an easy one. No. She doesn't have select permissions on dbo.merchant. There's a change in ownership, right? Because she owns admin.getmerchants and the, a different owner owns dbo.getmerchant. So she has to be given select privilege on dbo.merchant. Okay. All right, one final one here. Chrissy gives Terry the select permission on her view. Terry has no permissions on dbo.merchant. Can he select from Chrissy's view and get the actual data? What do you think? No, but this time it's for a different reason. <laughs> I said it was hard stuff, right? I said this is tricky. It's a little 1-2% type stuff that makes you look like a guru in the morning meeting. Um, this is really cool stuff, uh, but we need to know a little bit uh, deeper, okay? Remember, SQL Server checks permissions at every change in ownership. Terry had to have both the select permission on admin.getmerchants, which he had, okay? He did have that. She gave it to him, but he didn't have select permission on dbo.merchant. However, there is actually another way that Chrissy could have helped him out. What we're going to do next, we're going to talk to you about that other way. We're going to have to use impersonation in a different way than we did before. And then we're going to talk about transferring, transferring objects, uh, transferring schemas, uh, or transferring databases. Okay, see you then.